All right, so it's pretty official. Canada is an extremely fragile state, at least politically speaking. We got quite a few things to cover. We have an update in the polls or the projections. We have Justin Trudeau asking Facebook to wipe all data of him. We have a farmer's protest that has broken out right here in Canada, specifically in Quebec, as well as an update about the recent carbon tax protests and police uh, brutality or, I guess, intimidation is the better word we got quite a few things to cover here but before we get into it i want to encourage you guys to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already it does really help grow the channel and what helps it even more is when you turn on that little bell notification once you are subscribed it's post notifications it's just so that you can actually get notified it just adds a layer of insurance so you can actually yeah, get notified of upcoming videos. And if you want additional content, it's absolutely free. I have another channel called Mr. Sunshine Extra. The link for that is down in the description or the pinned comment below. I highly recommend you go and you uh, subscribe to that channel as well. I'm trying to see how fast we can get it up to 10,000. It's at 2.4K right now. All the smaller things also very important. Very important news stories here in Canada, but all the smaller things that are happening that I just don't have time to condense into this channel, I put it on there. So the link for that is down in the description or the pinned comment below. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So we have the polls. Conservatives still exactly where they need to be. Sitting at 210 projected with a bottom line of 185 seats where they only need 170 for a majority. Top end of 229. Like I said, I stand by this. You're going to start to see this slowly creep forward. And the bottom line is the bottom line projected will be in or in or close to the 200 range. And of course, odds of winning the most seats, conservatives still at 99%, and 99% uh, likely of winning a majority, 1% likelihood of winning a minority government. Everything is looking copacetic right now, especially with the collapse of the NDP, provincially and federally. People are jumping ship. They're walking across the floor, joining conservatives. It's absolutely insane what's happening. And this is all happening right before a question period federally is set to resume. And for those who don't know, I am scheduled to go to Ottawa to watch that uh, one of the next question periods live when it happens. So you're going to want to stay tuned. You're going to be subscribed to all the channels and make sure that you don't miss what happens there. All right. So now we have right from CBC themselves, a horse's mouth. Ottawa asked Facebook to remove false articles about Trudeau during the 2019 election. Inquiry here. So documents say government didn't make this info public because the information ecosystem had cleansed itself. Wow. That's kind of a wild thing. One of Canada's top civil servants asked that a false article about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau be removed from Facebook during the 2019 election, according to Friday testimony and documents tabled at the public inquiry into foreign interference. The article in question was published by the Buffalo Chronicle. It contained false claims including or involving Justin Trudeau and was spreading online during the 2019 election campaign. The Buffalo Chronicle website, which covers local news in the New York State, which is pretty much borders Toronto or or, you know, very close to Toronto, has been accused of publishing fake or misleading stories about Canada during and after the 2019 election. The claims in the article were being uh, discussed at the very top levels of Canadian government, document tabled with the inquiry show. Notes from an interview with Privy Council office employee Alan Sutherland tabled with the inquiry said he claimed Facebook brought the article to his attention. The content may have gained significant attention were it amplified and therefore risk threatening the integrity of an election. That's a little weird, man. That's a little weird. Can we at least see the uh, information in question so we can make our own informed decision at the direction uh, of then clerk of the Privy Council, they asked Facebook to remove the article and Facebook complied. So this is what's scary about Canada is the government can just say, well, that's not true. I don't like that. I don't like that. And it immediately gets removed. And that like, what about satirical content? What about making fun of things? What about adding commentary? Like there's, there's so many ways around this that the government just waves a wand and it just magically happens the way that that they want it's very scary it's very very scary that the government is taking election interference into their 
own hands, like the liberal government, and it's not being transparent the way it should be. I agree. Election interference is a huge concern. Foreign interference is a huge concern. But why is it that the liberal government are the ones that are making these decisions and waving their magic wand and they get the final say? Like, we know that Trudeau has overseen his own investigations in the past. It's just, it's so corrupt. The system is broken. And I, for one, am fed up with this. Uh, next up, we have on X. Um, the Trudeau being questioned about how the housing crisis is his fault, and Trudeau just projects and projects and projects. First question goes to the Globe and Mail. Hi, Kelly Kreiderman from the Globe and Mail. Prime Minister, earlier this week, you spoke about uh, the demand side of the housing, say, talking about how the number of non-permanent residents in the country needs to be under control. There's, the population grew by 1.3 million Last year, it's the fastest rate of growth in nearly 70 years. How do you explain to Canadians that it's not your government that's responsible for that lack of control at this point? The federal government sets the permanent resident uh, immigration levels every year, and we've had that steadily growing from 400,000 close to 500,000 now, because that's actually what we can take in, what we need to take in to keep our economy growing. Uh, that has been uh, providing Canada's growth at a time of, uh, of uh, opportunity and low labor, uh, uh, sorry, uh, labor shortages. So uh, we're going to continue to welcome in immigrants, as Canada has always done over the years. People who build our communities, people who are, are part of our, uh, our uh, the fabric of our communities and build a better future for themselves and their families. That's the permanent immigration. All right. So obviously it's satirical. That's not how Justin Trudeau looks or talks, but it might as well be. That kind of caught me off guard. It's pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. And speaking of being caught off guard, Justin Trudeau got evicted or might as well have been evicted from Alberta today. Here you go. Get him out of our country. He's not for Alberta. He's against us as a woman who saw Trudeau's convoy. People are starving and he's spiking the tax. It's awful. She added. Let's take a look at this video clip here. You just saw Trudeau's convoy. What are your thoughts on him? I would say get him out of our country. He is not for Alberta. He is against us. What do you make of the recent carbon tax hike? Unbelievable. It's awful. People are starving and he's spiking the tax. I'm not sure where a single mom or a single dad will go with this. So, yeah, I'm very, very disappointed in our team. He's being rejected by Alberta. Albertans do not like him, and that includes Danielle Smith, the premier of Alberta. Every time Justin Trudeau goes in and out of Alberta, he does it under the radar. Now, of course, the only way that he gets spotted is by people. He never lets any other politicians know. He never really does goes the extra effort to sit down and meet with Premier Danielle Smith. It's very disingenuous. That's not how politics are done. When you go and you visit another province, you should be meeting with with the premier, especially when you have uh, press conferences to discuss things that the premier is actively opposing. So very disingenuous to Justin Trudeau and uh, affordability across the board is something that people can agree is, is a massive issue, massive issue. I've covered this on, the, on this channel in the past many, many times. I don't have a video pulled up today about affordability, but there are a dime a dozen where people just, they can't afford groceries, especially parents. Parents, when you go to the store, you buy diapers, you buy wipes, you buy things for your kids. It just adds up into the hundreds, into the thousands, and that chews away at your, your equity that you should be putting towards rent, towards, well, I guess food, you're paying for food, but it's just, it's getting so damn expensive. And that's why you have people like this protesting. You have the farmers you have the farmers in Quebec, in Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu, Quebec, are protesting. And on the 8th. Let's take a look here. So this is by Daisy Media on X. Uh, well, he posted the video, but the source uh, is down below, as you can see. There are dozens and dozens of farmers that are out on the streets in Quebec protesting what I would only assume is the carbon tax. Now... If the farmers just refuse to do their job, you're going to see the store shelves are going to be really, really empty. And this is something that the government is not preparing themselves for. Now, I've talked about this on a video on Mr. Sunshine Extra, which is exactly why you should be subscribed to that channel, where Ukraine has just announced, or NATO has just announced that they are taking in uh, Ukraine as a part of NATO. And 
in light of that announcement, you're seeing gold prices, silver prices, commodity prices skyrocket. So people are preparing, they're anticipating something crazy to happen. And right now, with all the craziness in the world, you need people to work together. You need farmers to be able to do their job without government input, without government interference. And that's not happening. So this is, the, the government isn't thinking things through properly, man. You piss off the farmers, it's going to have vast repercussions down the road. And it's just not something that Justin Trudeau uh, has really put thought in. Where does this line end? It just goes and goes and goes. Holy smokes, man. There are so many farmers. And I believe that this is a fresh, a fresh sheet of snow that uh, Quebec just got from a snowstorm. Let's take a look. We have another video here. We're getting ready to leave. Everyone is here now. In five minutes, we're leaving. We're going to take the 133 to Saint-Jean. Oh my God. We are very happy with everyone that's here now. Very impressive and very exciting to see. Look at all those tractors, man. Holy smokes. And it's just going to keep going. I've said this for months. I've said this for months. People think that the Freedom Convoy was like the last big protest that happened in Canada. And don't get me wrong. I don't know if Canada can ever reach a, a protest that would be ever as big as what the Freedom Convoy was. But the momentum and the... Uh, people coming together collectively, right? The community around protesting has evolved and it's adapted and it's steamrolling and it's, it's picking up more and more speed. And the closer we get to actual elections here in Canada, the more momentum there's going to be for this. And it's just going to spiral. And the government really, I mean, the best thing that the government could do is, I don't know, call an election, get it done with, peel the band-aid off the scab and uh and hand it over to uh to the next party that's that's the only really thing that's the only thing that i can think of that is actually gonna stop all of the protests next up we have rebel news here uh that was on the scene during the carbon protests now this broke out across canada i went to my local one there wasn't this big of a turnout uh, but there were there were a few people waving flags. There were a couple tractors. There was a semi. I got to speak with one of the uh, the tractor drivers, right? One of the farmers. <clears throat> nice, nice lad. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's just, it's not going to end, folks. It's not going to end. People will continue to find reasons to protest, and it's their, their right here in Canada to do so. And it's just, the government does not know what's what's coming. The amount of protests that are, that are going to keep happening, they're going to keep popping up, and it's just going to add more animosity towards the current government. Cut the carbon tax. Cut the crap. Get rid of get rid of all this additional tax. It doesn't make any sense. Our government is so bad at spending money. And speaking of spending money, we have to wrap up this video. Trudeau announces $1.5 billion in rental protection fund for Canadians. Now, this is controversial because on one hand, yes, renters need uh, some protection and some reassurance. But on the second hand, there is no way that the credit bureau here in Canada would ever be able to successfully pull off landlords being able to send a credit report uh, on behalf of or, or, or for their rentees, right? Or renters. It doesn't make any sense. Let's take a look at the video nonetheless. It's kind of like Groundhog Day. You and I were here yesterday with a housing announcement. Now we've got another one, this one in Winnipeg. This one is about rental protections. What do people need to know? What's the takeaway here, Rachel? Good afternoon, Todd. Yes, so this is a $1.5 million, billion dollar fund. A, mil, a billion of this, Todd, is going to go towards um, community housing organizations, nonprofits, uh, and another $470 million is going to be 
actual money spent instead of just loans. The government is trying to focus this money on situations where low income or more affordable housing apartment buildings go up for sale, are bought up, renovated, and then put back on the market with higher rent prices than those tenants who are currently living there could afford, essentially pricing them out of the affordable homes that they have been living in. So the government with this fund is pledging to try to counter that by providing this money to these organizations so that when these big complexes do go on the market, they have the funds to buy them up and keep that rent under control. They're calling this rental protection to try to stabilize the prices and not face that upcharge you'd see if a new owner came in and changed things around. Mm. Uh, the Trudeau government, Rachel, has now earmarked billions and billions of dollars in new spending. Is, is there a plan, you know, to, who's going to pay for all this? Are they planning to raise taxes? Where's the money coming from? That is a fantastic question, Todd, and we put the They have raised taxes. You Dummy, dumb, dumberson. What do you mean? Are they going to raise taxes? What the hell do you think the carbon tax is? Oh, my God. Wake up, CTV. This right to the Prime Minister today. Uh, we are now at $25 billion that the government has announced so far, and we do know there is about a week or so more of announcements to come. So if you flash back to the last fall economic statement, you'll remember Freeland said uh, she wanted to remain fiscally prudent and keep that debt to deficit uh, GDP ratio down. So the Prime Minister was asked today, following up on a question, uh, Jenna Suds was asked on Power Play yesterday. Will there be new taxes? What kind of revenue streams is the government looking to kind of offset and balance these billions of dollars? And the prime minister was more clear today than his minister was yesterday in saying there will be no new taxes on the middle class. Now, that kind of leaves some room open, Todd, for them to find other revenue streams. A potential wealth tax is one of the things being bandied about. Uh, but certainly there is this open question right now of how the government is going to fund this, given the current context, not wanting to drive up inflation. Uh, and so far, beyond saying stay tuned for the budget and committing to there not being more taxes on the middle class, the government hasn't quite answered that question. I'm also curious about the public relations campaign that's going on here because uh, obviously they could wait until the budget comes out with these announcements, but they're trickling it out. There's clearly a strategy here to get people talking about it and to get the news media like us covering it. It's absolutely deliberate. What would usually be a few days of coverage, we'd have maybe a couple of weeks, the few days before, and then a few days after, sifting through all the stuff we missed on budget day. But this is now essentially like a two week event. Uh, the key thing I think for our audience to keep in mind is what the government is doing is rolling out specific bits of the budget with minimal details. And then we're asking for follow ups. Like today, we were saying, you know, you've put a lot of loans on the table, a lot of money that you are expecting to get back. What is the deadline on these loans? What is the term? What is the interest rate? And all of that, all of those little things that would kind of further shape out what these promises are, uh, we're being told, wait for budget day. So while yes, uh, Canadians are going to know a vast majority of what is in Freeland's federal budget uh, ahead of that April 16th tabling, there is going to be an onus for us to go through, check back on all these promises, read the fine print. And then, of course, I think the big number we'll all be waiting to see is what the current deficit is. Rachel Aiello in Ottawa, thank you. Just spending, spending, spending. No wonder Canada is in so much debt and we just can't afford anything. Um, that's kind of the state of where we are right now. We'd like to pass the question off to you as we approach the end of the video. How do you see a way out of this? Do you think that the Conservatives can fix this? Do you think that Pierre Poiliev can fix this? Or do you think that Canada is doomed? I look forward to reading the comments. That's where we're going to end it, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash the like button on your way out if you haven't yet. Subscribe if you also haven't. And I hope you can turn post notifications on so you can actually be notified of upcoming videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.